Hi folks, just wanted to put together another video eh, in my series of Aikido vlogs. Uh, this one about something that is quite important to me and the way that I teach and the type of Aikido that I like to show everyone. And this one's about the role of weapons and how we use the Bok and Joe and the Tanto within our training. Uh, for me, personally, the without studying proper weapon form, and how it relates to the body, you're, it's very difficult to study Aikido. Aikido is a martial art that does require a partnership arrangement in which to work. So when we're practicing, it's very difficult to even practice basic things like Tai no Henka. And, uh, you know, just general Henka Waza movement without a partner because you need that connection with which to work. So for me, weapons work in Aikido is how you practice solo. It's how you practice on your own and how you integrate that weapons training that you're doing into your Aikido technique. And this is the thing that I have a problem with because invariably a great deal of what you see being presented are weapons techniques that are in no way related to what you're doing in your hand-to-hand -hand movement and your unarmed movement and your taino henka and your, your, your waza, your techniques, everything that you're doing. So what we tend to see is, we tend to see a, a version of weapons work that therefore has no bearing really on what you do in an unarmed capacity. Therefore, when you're training all that time on weapons, you're not actually learning anything that's of practicable value or applied value to the techniques that you're going to be doing when you're working with a partner. So that's when I query and say, what's the point of this? Now, the type of weapons what I do and how I've developed it, I always ensure that the body movement and the hand positions for the unarmed and the weapons work are essentially the same. The principles remain the same, the centering remains the same, the hip and foot position remains essentially the same. So what you then get when you look at the type of weapons what I'm doing is a complete bastardization of what the basic movements that are shown in the Wama syllabus by Saito Sensei which is your seven basic Bokken, your 20 Joe and all the Awase, Tachiwaza, Kumitachi, all that stuff that goes in there as well. Uh, and when I've changed and altered that, I've done that so that a lot of the techniques that, that we train in, when you're practicing on your own, you're actually practicing your hand techniques. You're actually practicing your body skill instead of just moving a weapon about. Because let's be realistic about this. If you want to study, you know, Bokken, Jo, Jodo, you know, sword work, go to Kendo or Iaido or do something that's actually a genuine system. I've studied Iaido. I spent two years doing it in Glasgow. It was fabulous. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But nothing that I learned in Iaido was usable from my Aikido background. In fact, when my instructor at the time found out I did Aikido, he rolled his eyes because he knew he was going to have to fix problems from an Aikido standpoint that have got no applicability in real traditional sword work. And so in effect, what I was learning in Aikido wasn't useful to my hand techniques at the time and wasn't even anywhere closely resembling traditional Japanese sword work. So it was this weird thing that just exists in the middle and serves very little purpose other than building up a little bit of timing, a little bit of distance training. And that's still there, that carries through. It doesn't matter if you're doing weapons work that's relevant to how you move your body or not. You're still learning about ma'ai, distance, timing. You're still learning a little bit about um, kokyu and how to move, how to breathe. All of that's still valid. However, when we break down the weapons work in Aikido, what we have here is... Traditionally, from where I came from, <coughs> excuse me, you have seven basic sword. Now, those seven basic sword cuts then work into the awase, the ken awase movements, which are the blending exercises, which then go into the kumitachi, where you have five exercises with various uh, alterations and amendments that allow you to alter, <coughs> basically, how the final outcome of the partner exercise is going to go. Now, those seven, but that's a motorbike going by, I should just say. I've not just sawed myself. Those, those seven basic sod cuts that you see, rarely do they appear in any of the Awasi movement. They're there in principle. 
But then once we start getting into the Awasi movements, the basic Awasi, the seven Awasi or the ten Awasi, then we start to introduce movements that we've never trained in before. And then, once we move into the Kumitachi, we are definitely doing sword movement that we've never covered. Now, coming from a karate background, we used to stand in basic posture and practice punching drills, kicking drills, till, you know, it became second nature. But every single one of those techniques we were taught was then translated into the kata. So when you encountered a specific kata at a specific part of your training, you were not coming across anything you hadn't seen before. At no point in any of the basic sword work or the awasi work are you spinning 180 degrees and cutting towards somebody's legs like you do in the fifth. It's not there. So what's missing? And what can we do to try and make sure that these movements that we have in the later on techniques we've actually practiced? Because what you see is people who are great at moving back and forth in a straight line cutting. Number one, number two. You know, basic sword cuts. And number four. And occasionally number five. We're getting a pattern here. So for a, a martial art that's all about free-flowing movement and spontaneity and blending, the sod, for me, representing obviously the triangle aspect, uh, is all about irimi. It's all about entering. It's all about cutting straight to the, the very centre of the problem, which is theoretically your opponent. It's about unbalancing. It's about learning all that. But if you can't translate that into how you're going to use your body to undertake that, then you're wasting your time. There's, you're just swinging a stick about, you know. Or in some cases, like I've seen in some places, um, you're actually swinging a live sword about. Now, I, I get that these things happen, that people feel good about that. Um, but when you're training in a, a martial art that's predominantly about throwing, contact, grapples, that type of thing, you know, wrist holds, shoulder holds, body holds, the concept of swinging a live blade seems a bit out of place but I'm not going to take that away from anyone that likes to do that type of training but my advice is if you want to swing a live blade go and do your idol or study proper swordsmanship before you take your eye out or someone else's so uh, what we're looking here then is the body movements that we're doing at no point in any part of this gets explained properly through the weapons the weapons should be an extension of the body yes you should be projecting through the weapon yes you should be Combining timing and distance through the weapon, yes. But what about these other movements that we do in the Kumitachi that we've never ex experienced before? So what then happens is, going backwards and forwards, we're fabulous. We're centred, we're moving, everything comes together, you feel great. Then you have to do a Taino Henka movement and cut. And all of a sudden, you see people's posture going wrong. They are raising up in their toes, they are not centering their hips, they are twisting their body to get the cut in, uh, they are over-rotating the balkan, they are exposing their side to attack and counter-attack and actually exposing where the lack of balance is. All because they've never had to, you know, diligently practice that turn and cut X amount of thousands of times that they've done with the straight up and down. So it's, it, the, the whole thing seems out of context. And then on the flip side of that, we have the Joe work, which is 20, some say 21, basic movements. Now, a huge amount of those basic movements that we do don't appear in any of the partner exercises. None of them. Uh, we rarely see anyone doing Ushiro Ski, going backwards. You rarely see a Gyaku Yokomen movement in any of the kata. It is there. But, you know, when, particularly when you do the partner exercise to the 31 count, it is there, but it's it's only there in a small amount. So it's, why are we doing all these odd movements that we don't actually utilise? What's the purpose of that? And where does that take us in our weapons? Now, I'm not decrying any of the weapons work. Anyone who's practising weapons in Aikido, you know, my hat comes off to you because you're doing the right thing. You know, and if you're the earlier you practise it, the more you learn from it. You know, and it's the, the first thing I do with students is I put a balkan in their hand and I fix their posture and say, lift that. Congratulations, you've just learned to deflect straight up your centre line. Now you're starting to understand about centre lines, angles of attack, kuzushi points, before they even know they're doing it. You know, it's all there. You know, basic first balkan saburi is essentially like the entry into uh, ikkyo. 
when you think about it. And if you're projecting through the sword as you raise it, that's the sensation that should be coming right through your hand when you're doing basic EQ from Gyaku Hanmi Katata Dori. Or I Hanmi Katata Dori. Doesn't matter. It's the same thing. That same projection of the body through. That's what matters. And it's important that we get these lessons out. But when it comes to doing some of the Kumitachi stuff, it's all there. Now we can see, for example, in uh, Kumitachi number five, the one where you turn and cut to the legs, that's clearly Kota Gaish. That's clearly the start and movement of Kota Gaish. And in fact, instead of cutting to the legs, when they block with their own weapon going downwards, you can actually release one hand and take for Kota Gaish, and that becomes an alternate finish. But unless you practice that, your balance is not going to be there, your body's going to be out of sync. And this happens a lot in Aikido. We have weapons work for the sword that, that doesn't teach us what we need to know to work it later. And then we have excessive weapons work with the Joe that we don't actually utilise in any of the partner work. Now, maybe I was quite lucky that I had some more eccentric uh, teachers of Aikido because we used to do two-person attacks. So you'd have somebody from the front, somebody from the back. So you would use your basic choku ski into a shiro ski and then trap their weapon and throw them but more as a way to start using your body correctly and using your hips and it's something that i think i'm keen to get everyone else's opinion on this something that i think that we should look at more now I, i've expanded our basic uh, balking syllabus to include 20 movements including cuts to the wrists cuts to the elbows proper Yokomen cuts that we don't really see done very well, leg cuts, all these things that appear in the later Kumitachi. I'm prepping my students for when they encounter the Kumitachi and when they encounter the partner exercises that break down from that. And it's the same with the Joe. I try to encourage situations where they can utilise the techniques that they're actually doing, where they can understand the importance of when you're making an attack to, for example, a Shiro Ski, that you don't try and bring your shoulders up and lift the weapon up to head height. Because you're not attacking head height when you can be attacking the knees. And by attacking the knees, we then see us going into these movements, for example, for katagatami, because our arms end up in the same position. And then we can see where that rolls on into other techniques. You know, katagatami ura, where we start to turn through the shoulder. And you start to see all these little patterns and formations taking place. So I think it's really important that we as instructors learn all these little parts that make Aikido what it is. Aikido is, for me, still one of the richest and most inclusive and, what's the word I'm looking for, um, complicated martial arts that's full of lots of little secret things that you only start to see when you open your eyes to it and start to investigate the reasons why certain things are done a certain way or why certain, you know, techniques happen. Within every single weapons movement, there is a hand-to-hand -hand technique. And in practicing that properly for Bokken and Joe, and even Tanto to some respects, by practicing these techniques properly and tying the movements into our body movement, then what happens is when we're practicing on our own, everything comes together. You know, with the Joe, you know, Ski Gay Dan Gaish is not about sweeping someone's leg. Ski Gay Dan Gaish, number four of Saito's syllabus, is actually about Ikkyo. It's about Ski, forward, drawing it back, there's your Ikkyo, and you bring your hands round. For the Gay Dan Gaish is Ikkyo. It's not attacking someone's leg. Nobody in their right mind, if someone's coming at you with a baseball bat and you happen to have a brush handle, I don't know, Saturday night in Glasgow, who knows? I don't live in Glasgow, but I'm sure this happens. Uh, and, and someone's swinging a bat at your head, you're hardly going to go back and then step in and try and sweep their leg. But you may intercept and try to do Ikkyo. Do you know, that's the difference. And it's about understanding what we're trying to achieve here. For me, and this is where I would love to get the feedback in this one, folks. For me, the weapons work in Aikido is all about training yourself solo and individually in the stuff that you're going to use in partner work. So that even when you start to use partner work with the weapons, it's even better. Because then you are performing these controlled kata-like movements, but you're both practicing your hand techniques at the same time. 
So we're not trying to replace weapon styles, we're not trying to replace traditional swordsmanship, we're not trying to replace traditional Jodo and all this type of stuff. We have to look at this from the perspective of Aikido weapons training is not about teaching you to use a weapon. It's about teaching you to practice your body movement on your own. So I'd love to get the feedback in this one, guys, uh, for anybody that actually takes the time to watch these. Uh, we'll get some more dialogue going in the very near future. But uh, until then, I hope everyone stays safe. Uh, I hope we're all starting to see some of the boundaries caused by the past couple of well, what's that, 18 months now nearly, I think, I've lost count. Uh, however long this has been going on, uh, it'd be good to see some of the walls coming down and some of the training starting to take place as well. Uh, and if anybody wants to get in touch with me, feel free to do so through the YouTube site. Go onto our Facebook page, Catch the Drink in Aikido, or come and visit us at uh, www.kjaikido.co.uk. That's not KJ, as in bad, it's KJ you know, Kilo Juliet Aikido. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get your viewpoints. So stay safe, folks, uh, and I'll speak to you next time. Cheers.